in the Jewish culture, there's this concept of tikkun, change. Like, we believe that we're here to change the world. We're not here just to take from the world. So Jew that's one of the reasons why people see Jewish people as being successful. It's not so much that they're successful, but they're given this mission from the time they're born that you're not just going to get a job, but you're going to change the world. I was actually born just down the street at the Women's College Hospital, March the 8th, 1950, which was later made International Women's Day. My family owned the Pearlie's map books. My father and mother were map publishers, and I grew up above my parents' business. And it was a very bohemian, different type of lifestyle that we led. And uh, I was taken to a lot of, you know, music, a lot of plays. We lived in a middle-class Jewish neighborhood, and we were middle-class Jewish, but we didn't live in a materialistic lifestyle. We lived in a much more eclectic lifestyle. My, my father was a left-wing politically at that time, so one of the founders of the CCF party that later became the NDP party. So we were brought up with a lot of socialist views. Then I went to York University for four years. And then I went to U of T for a year and I became a high school art teacher. The first year of Free Times was really difficult. First of all, I bought a business I wasn't qualified to run. I had an inappropriate partner who was not qualified. Then my, it within like weeks, my mother fell and broke her arm, my grandmother died. Two months later, my father died. I split up with my boyfriend. The restaurant was going bankrupt, all within a matter of months. Everything was falling down. You know, my whole life is coming apart, basically. That was really difficult. Then, in 1990, I had another year that was a disaster. I invested some money in the stock market. I lost all my money in the stock market. Then the restaurant burnt down. My mother was diagnosed with cancer, and my mother died. That was, and, and then a robber broke into my mother's house and stole all my mother's jewelry, my grandmother's jewelry, and I lost all that, and my mother died. I wasn't ready to walk from it. I didn't quit. My parents ran a very difficult business for many years, so I saw people who stuck with things. I wasn't about, I knew I'd never get another chance. I didn't want to go and get a job somewhere. It was just not my way to walk away. Everything becomes a spiritual journey in the end. Somehow everything in your life, you have to figure out how am I going to do this in a way that's going to be okay for me and okay for everybody else and we struggle through that we go through you know I probably cried for for more than 10 years every single day that I had my business maybe 20 years I cried every day I had an epiphany I said you know I have this business it's not doing well I need to reinvent my business and here I am I'm living where I grew up on Eglinton. I'm seeing all these women going out and buying bagels and cakes for their friends. There was a restaurant down the street that had a busy brunch. I said, you know, I'm Jewish. I know how to cook Jewish food. I don't have any Jewish food in my restaurant. And wherever I go out for Jewish food, it's crappy. It's not being well prepared. Um, I invented this brunch. <laughs> Come here 
at least once every Sunday. We live around the corner, so why not? Why not get this pretty much whatever you want to eat right here? Delicious. It's just like good quality stuff. Like it's. It's a Toronto staple. Yeah, it's you know? a Toronto staple. It's been around forever for a reason. one of those things it's like we have multiple generations come here like three generations so I'll see kids who are like 10 parents and their grandparents right uh, a lot of people who come here their parents have come here so it's just one of those things that people come here because their parents came here and it's just like it's one it's I don't know it's, a, it's I think it's one of the only places in Kensington or actually downtown really that holds such historical value in that sense so then when I did the brunch and it actually worked and was successful from day one and everybody thought it was amazing, I felt like I could come out of my shell and I could be there because I was proud of what I was doing. When I started Free Times, one of my goals also was to, to be able to create an environment that I felt okay in. I didn't feel okay in the environments that I went to environments where I certainly have never felt okay in, in institutional environments. I fed the world really healthy, really interesting food for 35 years, employed probably hundreds and hundreds of people who've been successful in their lives and who have brought up families and done things. I've taught um, life skills to so many of my weight staff who've gone on to be successful in life because of the, the training that they've gotten at free times. Honestly, like, as crazy and weird and funny as she seems, like, she's always, like, there to, like, sit and talk to you and kind of, like, inspire you, you know? Like, she's, she's done some really sweet things for me that, like, no boss would ever do, you know? If you were to go work anywhere else, you probably wouldn't have the same energy unless you had her around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those things that, like, she's kind of like the driving force behind how the way we are and the way this whole place operates, right? So, as much as each one of us has our own individual way of working and being who we are, we're all pretty much shaped around her at the same time. You know what I mean? It's like, it's very strange. A lot of places you don't get that, you know what I mean? It's more like the management isn't as involved as she is. The other uh, one of the vehicles that I've used for success is like, you know, I joke around a lot. Okay, I'm very funny, and I use humor as much as I can in my work. I'm like, I'm constantly entertaining my staff. Real reasons why we oi here at the brunch. And if you watch my belly when I oi, 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 now that. Oi movement actually pushes the blintzes and latkes down so you can get more desserts. That's our number one reason for oying here. The number two reason is, um, in, you know, if you're a regular oyster, most Jewish people... It was part of the, 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 the Christmas party that everyone should do um, something, something that they don't do at work. And uh, some people probably say the joke or poetry or whatever and then uh, Judy says yes she can do something that she she's never done it at work and she while we were in a restaurant having Christmas party she runs and she did a stand-up and on her head which was very very weird but as um, also very cute because we never saw our boss being upside down <laughs> So that was, I think, I, I'll, I'll never forget it. Hi, Judy here. Just following the day with my pretty little toes. Judy here making chicken fricassee with little chicken feet. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I think the first find I did was of a burger at Free Times. And then I was, went to Barcelona a month or two later, and I said to Les, my boyfriend, let's do, try to do a little vine here. And I did Judy here on the way to Barcelona. Just waiting for the plane to take off. And that vine took off. That was my first viral. 
Vine, which is now, I think, over three or four million views. We thought that Judy making vines was so funny that we just kept, like, re rebinding her whenever she made them, and we'd laugh so hard. So once it started gaining momentum, I was scared, and I was like, holy fuck, I'm gonna lose my job. People have gotten fired over, like, stuff they do on social media and stuff. <laughs> I come downstairs one day, and she's just like, Jesse, did you know that my vines have gone to like 60,000 views? And I was like, no, no, didn't know anything about that. And I just kind of like played it cool. And she's like, it's crazy, it's crazy. I thought it was easy. You see, I'm very, very busy. So vines suited me perfectly because it's something really quick that you can do quickly and in and out fast. And that's how it it all started, but when I did the raccoon on College Street. Judy here on College Street with the raccoon at Shoppers Drug Mart. That one really went nuts, and that's, I think, up to like 17 million views or something like that. But Vine made me really happy because I started having all these followers that would be teeny boppers calling me from like Ohio, and I'd answer the phone, hello, <laughs> hello, is Judy there? <laughs> Uh, she always said that she wanted 10,000 people to attend her funeral, and I, I think she's probably going to achieve that goal. <laughs> you know? People can't forget her. That's the thing about her. It's funny. I feel like she's always been this character, and people around here know about her. And Like, I knew about Judy before I ever worked here, so you hear stories about her, and she's been this character forever, so... I think um, once the world started seeing it, you know, she, she thought it was great. So you don't have to be a success all the time in what you do. It really is, is not all that important. What's important is to be able to keep doing it is if that's what you want to be doing. We're too focused on success. And even when we have success, we don't know we have it. Because success is other people's perception of what you're doing. It's not necessarily your own perception. So, uh, you know, our, our society is way, we use words like success and what's your passion? You know, it's your passion. It's way overused. It's, it's free times is, is not, you know, passion to me is something that happens so rarely. Like real passion does not happen often in our, in, in, in our daily life. It might happen a few times a year if we're lucky that we actually feel real passion. So I think it's more of a devotion and a responsibility. Somebody once said to me that, you know, free times is Toronto. You take free times out of Toronto and a big chunk of Toronto will be gone. Yeah. So I'm very proud of that. Judy here with my latest catch. Be careful, I'm dangerous. <laughs>